well, maybe shorter. <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour, Quack Skina. Uh, I'm here uh, with my colleague Andrew Zdaman, and um, today we have a guest, uh, Courtney Montour, who's going to talk about his uh, her movies that uh, is now uh, online. Uh, so, Courtney, if you could present yourself, and then we'll, we'll uh, uh, I'll, I'll let uh, Andre speak. After that. Sure. Uh, Niawa for having me. I'm Courtney Montour. Uh, I'm a Ghanaian Gahaga filmmaker from Ghanawage. Uh, and I work in documentary um, for the last uh, about 14 years now. And my most recent film is Married to X Early, I Am Indian Again, which I wrote and directed. Andre, on ne pas. Okay, now you can hear me. <laughs> uh, it's a pleasure to have uh, uh, you with, with us today, uh, Courtney. Uh, we uh, have a strong connection uh, with uh, Ganawagi because uh, uh, we had our uh, activities uh, June 21st and uh, the uh, uh, great uh, chief, uh, Gosana Wieskaidir, came uh, to Montreal and It was fantastic. She 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 uh, she has a very uh, strong wo words and uh, a voice of a, a very uh, dedicated woman. And uh, she has even uh, outstarred uh, the mayor of Montreal <laughs> in uh, the media. So uh, we were really happy to, and uh, to have also the Mohawk elders uh, near the Saint Lawrence River to. Uh, celebrate this uh, special day, but also to uh, establish that uh, the presence of uh, First Nations on uh, this island is not uh, something that happens suddenly today, but uh, that has been uh, ancestral and uh, something that has lasted centuries. So uh, there is a kind of follow, natural follow-up uh, with you uh, today. Um, well, maybe uh, Mary to X early is a famous woman, but not known enough. Uh, and uh, maybe you can, just for the listener that are not aware of uh, who is uh, this uh, very uh, 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 fantastic woman. Can you briefly uh, present her? Sure, and I agree, definitely uh, definitely not not well known enough. Uh, Mary Tuax Early was from Ganawage, my community, and uh, Ganyagahaga, and she was a woman who took on Canada uh, to challenge sex discrimination in the Indian Act. And so for, for people who don't know, um, the Indian Act uh, originally had um, a policy where uh, First Nations women who married non-Indian men lost their status. But uh, you know, First Nations men who married non-Indian women, they gained status. And so it was really discriminatory uh, and sexist and a racist policy that really targeted the women and the children for removal from their communities. And so Mary Twax Early was one of the women who really took on this fight to challenge the government, um, you know, to get our rights back and to be registered um, with Indian status by the federal government. So that's why she's incredibly important in this country. And she was also um, a, key, a key figure in the women's rights movement as well. So it's something that is important for indigenous people as a role model, but Canada should also know this woman who was a key figure in, in history and women's rights. The, I don't want to, to uh, have a too easy uh, bad joke, but uh, she started uh, this fight very early historically because uh, uh, The, uh, in the 30s, uh, the, uh, the, the First Nations were had uh, uh, difficulty to uh, uh, stand in front of the, the colonial, colonialism and governments. And the, the many fights were uh, 
starting here and there, but uh, it was not an easy period uh, to uh, uh, try to uh, uh, gain uh, uh, the, uh, the rights, and especially for the woman. That's true. I mean, again, women as a whole barely had rights in this country. And then you think about indigenous women. Uh, and Mary started in the late 60s. And she was one of the first people to speak out and brought the story, um, I guess, really to the knowledge of other women in this country um, and to the governments. The first time she spoke out was in 1968. And uh, that was at the Royal Commission on the Status of Women in Ottawa. So she had brought a delegate of women from Ganawage there. And, you know, there was media. And so that first opportunity of, of bringing it out. And then it was really a grassroots effort from there, um, really gathering around the kitchen table, you know, at her home in Ganawage and meeting with women, traveling, you know, across Canada. Um, there was really, I'd say, a hub of women who worked on this issue um, came from Alberta and were situated in Edmonton. And together, you know, as a collective, they call themselves Indian Rights for Indian Women. So there was really a hub in Edmonton. And then Mary Twax Early was the vice president, and she was in Ganawage supporting on this end. So I think it's also really important to, you know, honor and recognize all of these women um, who were key figures and who were working in different parts of the country again, when it was more challenging then, you know, now we can just, you know, text and, you know, communicate this way very easily, um, you know, and they were just like having to pay long distance and telegrams. <laughs> so it was challenging for them and constantly having to, to fundraise to be heard um, by the federal government. Yes, uh, I am old enough, I can remember the, the time where the, the, the indigenous women's rights uh, were not uh, recognized. And I remember even the Canada was blamed at uh, the uh, Commission of Human Rights of the United Nations, telling you discriminate systematically by your laws, the uh, indigenous women. It was uh, really uh, a big uh, uh, Difficulty for Canada because uh, they, 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 we know that Canadian governments like uh, they want to look good uh, internationally, and uh, with uh, this uh, blame from the first uh, from the uh, uh, United Nations, they were not looking good at, at all. And uh, I remember it was uh, well, if if my memory is good. This is in 1985, under the uh, uh, conservative government, actually, uh, that the, the law uh, changed. Yeah, I mean, again, it, it's the, the first change was in 1985, Bill C-31, and Mary was the first person to um, like ceremonially receive her her Indian status um, by the federal government for the work that she did. And that's a moment that I included in the film, but it's a very, very short moment. I think it's maybe 20 seconds. And part of the reason for that is that there was barely any coverage um, you know, of this historic moment of Bill C-31 coming into place and, and that recognition of Mary. Um, by the Minister of Indian Affairs at the time at a press conference in Toronto. Um, and that was really, I think, a theme and challenge overall in making the film was that there was barely any archives um, on Mary 2X early, on Indian rights for Indian women, and, and just on the issue. So for me, that's, that's really telling of you know, who controls the narrative of, of the history in this country, uh, whose lens it's coming through. And so I think that's also why, I mean, that's what one of the reasons that drove me to make the film. Um, and it's such a beautiful personal story of Mary 2X early. Um, I was very fortunate that um, we have some audio recordings that Alanis Bombswin had recorded with Mary 2X early 
um, back in 1984 in Mary's home in Ganawage. And Alanis uh, had um, gifted me those recordings and asked if I wanted to do anything with them. And of course, for me, uh, you know, Mary is such a role model coming from the same community and having the opportunity to bring her story to a wider audience, you know, so that people can can know this trailblazer. Um, so to me, that was really special. And that's what really guides this, you know, half hour film is that there's a chance for the audience to sit with Mary. It's really her voice guiding it. And it's as if you're sitting around the kitchen table, listening and learning and, and being with her. Yes, uh, I have seen many times uh, Alanis Obobsawin in uh, uh, classrooms and university uh, in math, uh, during master classes. And she is always telling don't forget if you have sound, you have something important, right? Take sound. Sometimes you cannot have cameras around you. Uh, this is the first contact uh, with uh, uh, some people you want uh, to film later on. But uh, the recording is a lot easier. It doesn't cost uh, that much and you can have very precious material that can be used in further uh, projects. And I think we have a very, very good example of uh, this uh, wisdom, this professional wisdom, and, uh, I could say, that uh, 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 you have now the voice. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. The voice of uh, uh, Marie to, uh, to actually to, uh, tell the, uh, the story uh, when well, we have to mention that uh, she's not uh, uh, with us uh, no more. And this is a biographical film uh, about uh, a woman who is dead uh, now, but uh, not forgotten, uh, obviously. Uh, one, one of the, the things that should have been very, very difficult for her it's also there was a lot of uh, 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 male Indian uh, leaders that were against the, the, the change of, of the law. So she had uh, to confront not only uh, the, uh, uh, the government, uh, the uh, federal government, but also some uh, people in uh, our own uh, nations that were uh, not all in agreement with our fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, again, the pushback, those were some of the challenges that Mary and, and these women faced. I mean, again, it, it couldn't have been easy uh, when you think about our communities being under you know, the, the Indian Act for over a hundred years and this oppressive legislation and what that does to our communities. And, you know, the fear of retaliation or stepping out of line, um, if you don't follow these rules, cr creates tension at times in communities. And so that's, that's some of the things that Mary and the women dealt with. And it's something that we speak about in the film, um, that it can cause division in, in your own family um, and Nellie Carlson, um, another elder and co-founder of Indian Rights for Indian Women um, from Edmonton, originally from Saddle Lake. But she, she also talks about the same thing happening, um, you know, with them in Edmonton. And it's, it's just important, again, to, to know the history and what happened and to see where we can go from there. Um, and speaking about Nellie Carlson, it was so incredible to include her story in this film as well. Um, you know, being a co-founder, uh, being, I mean, she's another role model uh, and inspiration uh, for so many of our indigenous, you know, women leaders today. And we need to know these stories. And Nellie had passed away um, right after the film was done in 2020. So she had a chance to see it just before it was finished. Uh, but for me, it was important to know that, again, her story and her knowledge lives on. And I think that's that's an important part in filmmaking for me. Uh, 
also as, as being an indigenous filmmaker is that, you know, these stories and these truths, um, that's a responsive responsibility and honor for us to, to sit with people, record them and carry that on. Um, because like I mentioned, it's, it's not like our, our public archives were doing that historically, you know, there's starting to be a change, but, but we have that opportunity to do that for our communities. And that's something that's really important. Yes, this is part of uh, what uh, more and more uh, we call the narrative sovereignty. Right? That, mm -hmm. uh, we have the right to tell our own story by uh, our own view and perspective. And uh, obviously, it's not the same story. You, you mentioned the fact that there was uh, uh, very few coverage of the uh, uh, important historic moment uh, uh, in uh, 1985. And uh, mm -hmm. this, this flaw is uh, obviously because uh, we, uh, uh, APTN was not there at this time. Uh, the, uh, that was not all the uh, uh, Aboriginal uh, filmmakers and uh, journalists that we have uh, today and uh, those at, the, at that time uh, that there was no uh, uh, important means in uh, the hand of uh, indigenous uh, communicators so that was the uh, radio stations uh, the, the community radio but uh, uh, no uh, no real resources for uh, filmmaking except maybe Adanis, but uh, she was alone and uh, she did the fantastic work, but alone, of course, uh, she couldn't do any, uh, everything uh, by herself. But now uh, it's uh, fantastic to see in, uh, in Ganawagi, uh, there is uh, uh, several uh, uh, filmmakers now, Tracy Deer, uh, uh, Roxanne Whitebean. Uh, Roxanne Whitebean, I was thinking of her and you. So, and uh, Deborah Bombswin, yeah, Devery Jacobs. I mean, it's great to see that we have a hub of uh, filmmakers um, making a career out of it, you know, in the industry and being able to sustain themselves. That's that's important as well. But I think another part of that is uh, giving back to our communities and making space so that um, our youth and the people in our communities are aware of the possibilities that are out there in storytelling. Um, you know, sometimes if we don't have access to it, how are we supposed to know about all these careers that ex exist, you know, in set design and art direction and editing and, you know, all these things that, that people can be doing um, to, to create those opportunities of, of access because we, we need people in the field. Yes, and uh, obviously you uh you are more and more a role model to uh, open uh, the, the way to uh, the younger generations that, that are coming. We speak with Marion de la Ronde often in uh, Ganamorgue, and uh, she uh, is at the cultural center. And she never forget that uh, we have to uh, give back the, 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 the knowledge uh, to the younger uh, people that are uh, uh, coming uh, of age because we uh, uh, many people have opened the world but if you want we want we don't want the new generation to start where we have started we want uh, uh, them to start where we are now to uh, 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 go uh, uh, even uh, 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 more and more positively in the in the future so that that's really uh, important uh, I know you study journalism at uh, Concordia. How do you uh, uh, finally uh, happen to be a filmmaker uh, uh, instead of a more classical uh, journalist? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's funny. I actually think for me, the paths uh, didn't intersect or have anything to do with one another. Um, I, I, I feel like I didn't bring any of that journalism practice into my filmmaking practice. Um, I had started with uh, Mushkeg Media, a pre-production company uh, in Montreal, um, run by Paul Rickard. And um, 
And at the time they offered for, for many years, training opportunities um, for indigenous peoples who didn't necessarily have any experience. And for me, that was, that was fantastic. Um, I wasn't sure that I wanted to necessarily pursue a, a career in film, but by being there and being supported um, by an indigenous production company that gave me the chance to try out everything, you know, editing, production management, uh, sound, and just bringing me out there in the field as well. Um, it, it, that's what led to me deciding that I wanted to continue in a film, that there was actually a space where um, I could make change, <laughs> that, uh, you know, that, that our stories mattered and we, and we have the ability to make change. Um, and that's, that's what led me to, to writing and directing. So again, that goes back to how important I feel that mentorship um, for Indigenous people, by Indigenous uh, people in the film industry is really, really important. And I remember uh, years ago, maybe six, seven years ago, you have presented a film called Flat Rock. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was also about uh, a fiber. Uh, it was about uh, uh, Louis Diabo, if I remember well, who uh, was also uh, Ganawage uh, Rodan. And uh, can you speak about that film? It mm -hmm. seems for me you are interested in uh, those people that are leader and that uh, are uh, uh, struggling uh, to uh, uh, establish the, the rights of, uh, of First Nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Flat Rocks uh, was in 2017, and that was created with Roxanne Whitebean um, and through a National Screen Institute program. Um, and for how the story really came about um, was we were sitting with one person that we were going to be interviewing, and he kept speaking about Louis Daibo and the Im impact that that had on his, his life, um, the St. Lawrence Seaway construction. And I had never heard about Louis Daibo's name before. So, you know, I started asking my grandmother and other people. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that was, you know, a big story. Uh, and for us, the St. Lawrence Seaway construction in Ganawage in the 1950s tore through our community. You know, it forever changed our livelihood, our landscape. Um, I mean, it cut through our community and people had to relocate. Um, and Louis Daibo was one of many, many stories, but one who, again, really stood up and pushed back uh, against the government and held out on his land um, until they were digging and all around him. And he eventually had to move into the community, but it, you know, it, it destroyed his, his way of life. Um, and I think his his struggle and his passion was just really emblematic of what our community was going through. And again, I feel like it's a story that's not um, that well understood by people who don't live near the community or are from our community. They don't realize, realize how much that impacted us. Um, so that's why I focused on, on his story. And I think, you know, Going back to even high school, I wasn't interested in, in history, but as I got older and spending time and getting to know about the stories, you know, in my community or indigenous communities, you know, a, across across Turtle Island, those are the stories that, you know, that speak to me and that I feel like we need to know because they're about us. Um, so that's that's why I feel like some of my films have, um, you know, a historical beginning in them, but they're things that impact all of us today, whether we're Indigenous or not. Just like Mary Tuax early, again, like I said, she she changed a country, she changed a policy, she knew she knew political leaders, uh, ministers of Indian affairs were coming to her home and and having lunch at her kitchen table. Um, you know, it's not the kind of things that happen on a normal basis. She was an extraordinary woman and someone that, you know, Canadians should know about. So that's why it was really important to bring her story forward. And, and I think her story, it's also 
something um, that we can all learn from, you know, that we really have the ability to create change as one person. Um, and that's what she was able to do by, by being compassionate and, and just sticking to her beliefs. You know, it was like two decades of her life, but change, change started and, and people are continuing with that work now. In a sense, uh, I am also involved in that story because uh, my uh, mother, who is Pierre-Quagui uh, Villeneuve, had married uh, a white person. So she had uh, no Indian recognition officially. And uh, I remember when the last change I was, uh, you know, I said, I know who I am. I don't need a card. I don't need uh, But uh, one day my mother came to Montreal and said, we are going to and we got registered. It was so important for her. So, uh, Mary to Early's fight changed the life of many, many persons in this country. Yeah. And that's something that um, has been an incredible gift with the release of the film is mm seeing the stories and reactions coming out, it, it feels like for so long, um, our communities have been silenced um, with this trauma of this separation. But now, whether it's in-person screenings or sometimes just on social media, I see people um, talking about Married to X early and talking about their family's personal experiences, um, You know, whether it was themselves, their mom, their grandmother, and, and talking about that, that healing that's going on now. So again, that's why it's important to know this history and, and where we're coming from. Um, there was a little girl in Saskatchewan recently um, who just won an award for doing a presentation on Mary 2X early um, in the provincials. So again, to me, that's, that's amazing that she's connecting to her family. Um, and what happened in the Indian Act to four generations of her family, but plus she's also talking about Mary 2X early and it's circulating around the province. And so to me, that's change when no matter what age and seeing this youth coming forward and connecting to community and also talking about Mary 2X early, it's, it's a full circle experience. I have been uh, several times on consultative community about uh, toponymy in Montreal. And uh, the, the name of Mary uh, 2X early is always in the top names uh, to have uh, official recognition, but, uh, to name a street. And uh, I know that uh, uh, there is new metro stations that are coming. And at uh, Radio Canada, the, the, the French uh, CBC, they, uh, uh, at the radio station, the morning uh, show, they ask uh, people, who, who do you like, like uh, to be uh, uh, on, uh, honored by uh, having their name on new uh, metro stations? And the top name was Mary to Axerly. Mm -hmm. So she is uh, uh, maybe not uh, uh, well known enough, but she has uh, her fans and, and uh, uh, enough people aware to uh, connect to uh, the uh, social media and uh, vote to have her name uh, uh, raising to the top of the list at this. Uh, unofficial uh, sondage at Radio Canada, but it was nice to see the her name pop up at, uh, uh, as uh, the, the, the wish name for uh, uh, new stations. The, 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 they will be there in two years, three years, I don't know, but no, we ho hoping that it, it will happen. <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing to hear. I mean, again, that's it's really exciting uh, to know that that people are talking about her. Again, that that means that people are connecting to her story, but they're also learning about this issue. They're learning about sex discrimination. They're understanding that these are things that are impacting people today. Um, so, it, you know, again, it, it's all part of 
a bigger story. And there's been um, a few recognitions lately of Mary 2X early that I think you know are are important as well. Um, last year, Google Doodle, you know the the homepage on on Google that changes to honor a, a historical moment or person. So they honored Mary last year in June, and. Um, Star Horn from Ganawage uh, was the person who created the, the artwork for it. So that was fantastic. Uh, I was able to write a blog. Uh, Aguira Deca from Ganawage, Aguira Deca Martin from Ganawage also uh, did the, the Ganyageha version of the blog. So it was great to see community working together on a, a Google project honoring Mary. Um, and just this year, uh, the World Book Encyclopedia reached out and they are adding uh, an entry on Mary 2X early in their online encyclopedia. So again, to know that uh, there's kind of, you know, this larger international talk about her is, is fantastic to see that recognition coming. It's so important because for so long, our, you know, Indigenous leaders uh, and accomplishments weren't talked about you know, in, in the public, and they weren't really acknowledged, especially stories of our Indigenous women. So it's so it's so nice to see that that this recognition is coming and people are, are talking about the positive things uh, that our women have done to change this country. Uh, also, the uh, I think we have uh, to ask you today, uh, you certainly uh, see that question coming. Uh, what are your uh, the, your future projects? What what are you working on, on now? <laughs> well, a few things. I uh, had wrapped on Pulse with the uh, Nish Media, Jason Brennan's company, um, and Pulse is a, a dance series. Um, each episode is about a different Indigenous dancer, following them off the stage. Uh, and what drives um, their style of dance and their performance. And then we also get to see them do three beautiful excerpts of performances um, on a private stage. And so that show, uh, I poured my heart and soul into that. I think it's so beautiful. And that'll be coming out on APTN later this year. Uh, and it's, again, it's so incredible to see uh, the diversity uh, in styles of dance that we have in our Indigenous communities across this country, uh, you know, from traditional ballet, burlesque, um, there's so much variety and, but what, what I find always interesting, I'm always passionate, passionate about um, our connection to identity and each of these dancers, no matter their background or where they come from, their identity and culture is such a driving force um, in their style of dance. So I, I love that. Um, and I'm also working on The Last Land with Resolution Pictures, um, which is a, a Mi'kmaq fisheries documentary show. And we're just filming season two right now. So I'll be heading back out east in a couple of days to film for that. Oh, that's fantastic to see that uh, the, the, the career is ongoing. Uh, and uh, speaking of EPTM, uh, uh, this year uh, your film uh, would be on the list for the uh, EPTM award because uh, at uh, the next uh, Montreal International First Peoples Festival, we will uh, uh, have a word, and uh, of course, uh, there is this uh, EPTN award to spe to uh, uh, a prize that is uh, given for a special accomplishment of uh, Aboriginal filmmakers, Canadian Aboriginal filmmakers, during the year before the festival. So, who knows? <laughs> but the good news you are on the list, the, well, it's still a good news. There is a lot of good film in the list uh, too, because uh, the uh, indigenous uh, uh, filmmakers are uh, more and more uh, productive, and uh, we have more and more films that are uh, coming uh, each year. And uh, I took uh, the, the, the opportunity to have a parenthesis about uh, the next uh, 
festival that will take place in Montreal, uh, 9 to 8, August 9 to uh, August uh, 18th. And uh, of course, we will have uh, uh, concerts on Place de Festival and uh, uh, art shows and galleries, but also a big uh, uh, competitive uh, cinema section with uh, films at the Cinéma du Musée. So uh, the, in uh, three weeks, uh, we will uh, announce uh, the official programmation. So uh, we invite everybody to be, uh, to stay tuned uh, because uh, the, the, this will be a, a beautiful uh, moment and a good opportunity uh, to know better the uh, uh, indigenous artists and uh, all uh, the uh, fantastic uh, works uh, they, uh, they have to, uh, to offer. Uh, so uh, do you have something to add, uh, my dear colleague, Alexandre? I was wondering about the word of the day, uh, and I just thought that what, how come uh, we, I, we, I didn't choose mother as a word, because I think we have uh, our own words. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, uh, how do you say mother in, in Canyon Hiaga? In the language, Ista? Mm -hmm. Is there like a meaning uh, behind the, the word? I mean, I'm not sure if there's a, a deeper meaning than, than mother. Mm hmm because we know that uh, we have uh, pretty much the same word for a uh, different language and uh, like as I saw um, I tried to um, to understand what 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 does it mean so for in Atikamek Narumwen we say Nigawi my for my mother uh, you can we can say also Ugawi for her mother or uh, Kigawi for your mother. It's the same principle. Ni means my. my. Uh, we would say Juzo for mom, my mom. And uh, Eastern Cree they say Nigawi, yeah, for the same word, my mother. Naka for mom, mommy. You know, Imun, I think it's pretty much the same, but it's uh, written in different uh, uh, letters. My mother. Nigawi, Nekneka, for mom, mommy. And uh, in Eastern Swampy, uh, Swampy Cree, Nigawi, my mother, Ugawiwa, uh, Ugawiya, that's for uh, her mother. So, okay, I'm pretty sure that uh, it will be the same for Nigawi if we say my mother. Plain screen Nigawi, okay. Uh, and what is the difference here? It's my mother's sisters. So, I'll means like uh, my mother is like it could be my mother and my mother's sisters uh nishinabem wins in gashi my mother and and maman i think in maman it's like uh sounds like you come from the french french was for mama and an ojibwe is a ninga and I, um ask uh, some women uh what does it mean to uh to say nigawi and they say that it comes from nigan that's uh that's the root word for in advance when the future when ahead and if we say nigan will you nigan you will see uh it means uh, to lead or to take the lead or to be the leader so for for them mother is mostly like um, to be a leader and uh I know that uh, in, in, in our culture, the man used to um, come on, so that he, he can lead the, the, the camp, the, the, the territory, but at, at last, it's, uh, it's the mother that can, how do we say it, reverse a decision? Change, change, uh, change the decision that has been taken previously. And, and and I think they have the power to change the leadership also for in, in the man. So that's for uh, the, the word of the day. So woman <laughs> and leader, it's uh, uh, two notions that uh, are uh, stick together in our uh, traditions. Mm. Thank you, Alexandre. And uh, 
thank you, Courtney. Uh, oh, Alexandre, you have to put the link uh, to, to see the film. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the film now is has been released across Canada. Uh, you can stream it on the National Film Board of Canada website, nfb.ca. And it's married to Axe Early, I Am Indian Again. And it's in its original English version, Ganyageha, and in French. All three mm. versions are available on the website. Oui, c'est important de mentionner, il y a une version française. So, mm. uh, the, uh, uh, the, the film can... Uh, be uh, heard by uh, French speakers. With, uh, and uh, this is, uh, thank you for the NFB because uh, I know they don't translate all their, their film, the, the, uh, but uh, this one, it was important uh, that uh, a French version uh, would be available and it is now. Uh, that's fantastic. So, uh, the, uh, we have uh, to say now uh, till next week. Yeah, next week. Uh, just to make sure that uh, one note, uh, I see that you can have the French version into the French website. You can't. You can choose the the language through the 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 player. That's right. Mm. Okay. Fait que on se voit la semaine prochaine. See you next week. Attachez-vous, Nicolas. Au revoir.